watch the game. C tremendous defense. One of the keys, I guess, probably Fuller going out early, although while he was in there, the defense did a good job against him. I think the big play, uh, aside from Fuller getting injured, was when Fred Robinson sacked him. Uh, Fuller uh, looked like he had a lot of field out, out ahead of him. Here we see a couple other sacks, but uh, uh, Fred really played a super game. Here he pulls Lich down. He got two sacks in the game, Mike, which is something that hasn't happened for uh, a Charger in a long time, I believe. Uh, there's another Fred Robinson sack uh, on Fuller at that point. Chuck Ian also in the picture. And Lee Williams, Billy Ray Smith. Billy did a fine job of stepping over Walter Payton there. Walter, uh, I think, was surprised at Billy's agility there and uh, let him get right through. Another good play here by our defense. Uh, obviously, this was the, uh, the one that really broke the, the Bears' back. Uh, Lee Williams picked up the, the pass in midair uh, after uh, Lish was hit by... Uh, Keith Ferguson. I was just thinking goal line and it was surprising me as well as everybody else. I looked back a couple of times to see if anybody was closing in on me. And I, I saw a couple of guys at the corner of my eye, but uh, I looked up and there was a goal line. We received a lot of criticism. Last week we had an off week and uh, we set out to redeem ourselves and I think we did a pretty good job of it. The thing that impressed me is swarming defense, particularly when Walter Payton got the ball. Well, you didn't see Walter break any long runs yesterday, and that's what you have to do against him, is you have to get a lot of people around him. Just great hitting there, though. This is really fun to watch. Uh, I think Walter was surprised at uh, uh, the ferocity of our defense and the way that they gang tackled. Although, before the game, I talked to him, uh, and Coach Bass was in the room when we were talking, and, and Coach Bass, uh, of course, is... Uh, coached against uh, the Chicago Bears when he was with Tampa Bay, so he's very familiar with Walter Payton. You know, I think the same story, too, on pass defense. There were always four or five jerseys around the football. Well, there was great hitting in our secondary. We got the good pass rush out of our four down men, so that meant we could drop back uh, and cover and play uh, with more men in the secondary. There, Tim Fox drops the sure interception. That's why Tim plays defense. <laughs> All right, now here's one coming up. I mean, this should have been a touchdown, but I guess it must have been a wet pigskin or well, something. I uh, really don't know what to say. It's just a, a shame that it had to happen, but uh, Bobby really showed a lot of character uh, coming back on this very next play. 88 yards, stepping out of a tackle here at about midfield and then taking it in. And he does have a pretty firm grip of the ball this time. The other guy last night, I think, that uh, we'd like to single out is Ernest Jackson. Uh, I think the fifth back in Charger history to go over a thousand yards. Really a great accomplishment for a young man who uh, a lot of people didn't even know about going into the season. We felt that he was very uh, good running back and when uh, we lost Muncie earlier in the year we had to put the load on Ernest and boy he has responded extremely well. All right, the Bronx. <laughs> from the campus of San Diego State. It's the San Diego State Aztecs and the USC Toreros. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chuck Fritz, along with Carolyn Dunlap, and wa welcome to Women's Aztec Basketball on Channel 69, KTTY in San Diego. The first of many, many games will be brought your way this season. Uh, Carolyn, earlier today, the Associated Press coaches poll came out with their top 20 ranking. The Aztecs have moved for the very first time ever into the top 10. They are now ninth in the country, a mark of 6-0. The question being right now, how good is Ernest Riggins Aztec basketball team? Well, the record speaks for themselves, Chuck, okay? As you said, they are ranked ninth in the country. At the beginning of the season, they were ranked 13th, and now they're ninth already. And again, this is the first time they've ever been ranked in the history of San Diego State University. One name that you will hear us mention quite a bit tonight, and that, of course, will be All-American candidate Tina Hutchinson, she is an outstanding athlete to be sure. Tina did something last year no other freshman had ever done in the women's college basketball. That was average 30 points a game. She comes into this game now averaging about 20, just under 25 a game. Tina had a problem on the road trip though. She got busted in the chops by somebody's elbow, went in yesterday for some root canal work and she will be less than 100% tonight. What effect that might that have on the game? With the ball right now, that's Renee Overton. She's a fine little uh, point guard and 
You'll see a lot of her. Well, she's improved quite a bit from last year, Chuck. That's Tina from 18's got it. Tina from 18 feet, straight out. Hutchinson has her first bucket of the night. The Aztecs on top by a score of four to nothing. All right, you see a lot of pressure coming up. That's Mary Stanbra with the ball now. She tries to get away from a two-man two trap. Over to Thoreau, Debbie Thoreau. Mary Stanbra back out to Kathy O'Brien. O'Brien airs it out from 18, won't go. Wallace with a rebound, tipped away. Thoreau had it, now Tina's got it. Here come the Aztecs, Tina gonna take it in. Dish it off, Overton goes up. Tina, or I should say, Overton gonna be called on an offensive foul. So we'll have to just wait and see if there's a success Tony with Wallace, that. Excuse me, Tony Wallace takes it in on a nice feed from Tina Hutchinson. And the girl they call affectionately Big Bird, Tony Wallace with a deuce, and the Aztecs go up by a score of six to two. Showed a nice touch in that little 10 footer from the baseline. A Dee Duncan with the ball. Inside, Zelda Ardeno, nice pass off to Tony Wallace, a little tip by Arsenault, didn't go. Again, Aztecs got three chances at the basket that time and finally got it in. Tony Wallace puts it in, and the Aztecs with a big front line take a 9-6 to six lead right now. That's Mary Stanbra. Kelly Schroeder's got it. Schroeder puts up a little five-footer, won't go. Here comes Tina on the break. Tina all the way. She's got it. Tina Hutchinson all the way. She's going to try to fast break. That's Dee Dee Duncan. Now Dee Dee will slow it down. Back out to Overton. Inside. That's Arsenal. Inside to Tina. Got it. Great play. Nice. Down at Penny Toller's, and I bet you will see a lot faster game. She really runs that fast break well. Tony Wallace sits down, and she is replaced by Paula Pajinski. Number 45 for the Aztecs. So the Aztecs uh, and Ernest Riggins. Getting some early substitutions in. Kohler and Prochinski in for Overton and Wallace. Inside, Tina back out to Didi. Didi puts it off the glass, won't go. Fighting for it, that's Shelda Arsenault. And Shelda kind of slows things down. Now feeds it inside. Tina did not get it on a nice feed from Arsenault. And the down low, got it. <laughs> and there it is, what Tina does so well. Maybe two. <laughs> Outstanding pass by Penny Toller into a Tina Hutchinson, and just like that, the Aztecs get a quick deuce. Penny with uh, a lot of pressure outside. Kathy O'Brien over on the wing. O'Brien trying to work herself in on the baseline. It's over to Mary. Freshman on the team, and she's disappointed she doesn't start. She started in a couple games earlier in the season. Tina, turn around, got it. <laughs> Dee Dee Duncan in the wing. That's Tina going to drive the lane. Tina puts it up. Got it. And she gets inside, and it's good. And Tina was fouled on the play. It's All-American, just a sophomore. Boy, is she good. Well, you can see why she's ranked second best player in 1984. Cheryl Miller of defending champion USC, of course, the player of the year. Aztec with a lot of pressure after Tina made the uh, free throw. to 14. Tina, they're going to call Stratton. Got a foul on the play. We were with the first shot game now. Prochinski, Kohler, nice pass inside, Tina on a turnaround, two. Tina for two, nice pass inside by Kohler. Credit to the USC team, they're playing very well. Stolen away by Kohler, he's gonna go in. Penny with a left-hander for two. Tina works baseline, goes up over two Terreras and hits. Nice basket. Nice shot, nice soft touch by Tina. Six, Kathy Marphy. Head coach of the uh, Toreros. Tina gone for her 28th straight free throw. Perfect. She gets it. Two stamps on the right wing. Baseline, O'Brien. She can't do anything. Tries to get past the pick, won't go. And There's Tina Hutch. Way by Thoreau. She wasn't looking where she was passing the ball. Nice pass inside that time, and uh, Kathy O'Brien winds up with the deuce. Aztec, a little bit too hot doggish there, I think. and. Uh, it cost him a, a basket. Heidi Bauer from way outside, uh, no good. Thoreau, rebound on the run. A stamp tries to force it. Heidi Bauer, stolen away, Bauer gets it back. Tina. Penny Toller. Inside. Inca Harvey. Won't go. Rebound for Chinsky for the two. Paula was wide open the whole time. She gets two. 
They're getting an awful lot of second and third shots, the Aztecs are, and they're making them pay. Two on one. Solar taking it in. Got it. And that's the fast break they practice so much.